All right, all right, all right. You are now rocking with the best. Thank you for tuning in to another exciting, exhilarating episode of the Catch This Fade podcast. I am joined by a special guest today. We are going to get into the draft season, so I brought on none other than the one, the only, Mr. Foots the King. What's going on, Foots? Man, Katie, uh, I'm, I, it, 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 it sucks that we are locking in under these circumstances, but I, I, I'm excited to do some draft work. I'm excited to to get down to breaking prospects, breaking prospects down. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't plan on returning to doing videos until the season was over, and I was like, February. I'm, I'm going to get started in February and shit, and then they just collapsed against Green Bay, and now here we are, you know what I'm saying? So we yeah. do what we do. We get down to business. So uh, we're going to start off with a little bit of rapid fire, get a little bit of feel for how you, how you see the things on the team, and then let's get into a little bit of draft talk, all right? So cool. we're going to do real quick. One word answer. You tell me, should this person stay or should this person go? Mike McCarthy. Go. Dan Quinn. Go. Dan, uh, Dak Prescott. Stay. Okay. You had me a little bit nervous there. You had to think about it. Okay. <laughs> um, Stephon Gilmore, pay or go? Bring him back? Pay. Okay. Um, Grooves or backyard? Backyard. Yeah, that was a little bit of D DMV love right there. So, you know, we both from the it. same area. <laughs> so I had to throw you that in there before. Yeah, before we got into the nitty gritty, man, I was about to ask you if it was going to be stomp or bugs, but you know what I'm saying? I went ahead and did the whole band for you. So, okay, you'll go backyard, <laughs> you go BYB. I completely yeah. understand. Let's talk about this draft for the Cowboys because there's a lot of things um, that the, the Cowboys are going to need. Obviously, free agency is going to hit first, so a lot of the holes are going to get filled. Dallas has a reputation. They don't really go big in free agency as far as star-studded guys, so they look to get their key players through the draft. And the biggest conversation that we need to have that everybody was talking about down the last half of the year, off-ball linebacker. I am team linebackers don't matter. Everybody knows that about me. I don't want to spend the high pedigree picks on them. I don't want to sign high price free agents. But down the stretch of the year, the Cowboys were really exposed based on the injuries that happened to the linebacker position and not having enough depth. So talk to me. Let's let's do this from an educational standpoint. Talk to me about what the Cowboys want their off-ball linebackers to do. What's the profile of what they're looking for? Well, it, it's interesting because you go back to the 2018, I believe it was either 2018 or 2019 when LVE was drafted, yep. and they had a certain profile, right? And that was before Dan Quinn was on the team. And, you know, his profile was 265, Hawk, um, a guy that can play laterally, but he's coming forward. He, he's coming downhill. He's filling gaps. And then Dan Quinn comes, and you fast forward, and LVE is still on the team, and they brought him back, and they did pay him. But yep. it, there's a clear difference in the type of a player that Dan Quinn wanted, guy that can run, guy that can cover guy that can be multiple hey we don't need a true middle linebacker we'll put a safety in there i.e j ron curse i.e marquise bell and you know you had to use bell in there because of injury so right. it, the profile for me has changed i'll be honest i just want a guy who plays that position and it's and it's because for me katie i see a philosophy change in the nfl okay um, do you want me to expand on that philosophy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It's your world, man. Give me, give me, give I me mean, everything that be, you're thinking to about. To be honest with you, Katie, I feel like every five or ten years there, there starts to be a shift in what's happening in the NFL and the okay. good team, right? So there was, I would say, from about 2015 to 2019, offense was up, 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 up. Throw the ball all over the yard. Right. Running back is not needed. That's why there's these arguments. So, oh, why would the Cowboys ever draft Ezekiel Elliott over a corner? That can, you know, in Jalen Ramsey, or why would you never take, why wouldn't you take a receiver because you want offense, offense, offense? Well, now what we've seen is, especially teams that have beaten the Cowboys, uh, teams that are successful here lately in the playoffs, you see teams that are running the football. You see right. teams that are playing defense. You're looking at a Baltimore team that said, hey, our defense is okay. Let's go get Roquan Smith and put him in the middle of our defense and play downhill. You see a team like San Francisco who, Yes, they did hit on Fred Warner in the third round, but he's a true linebacker. It's not a right. safety converted. He's a true linebacker. So to me, some of the better teams in the NFL, some of the teams that draft a certain way, I just believe that 
the NFL is shifting back to run game and defense. So you get all these light boxes, Katie, and you get all these light defensive tackles that want to fly upfield or yep. just run the ball. And we saw that in, uh, Green Bay just ran the ball over and over and over again in different ways, and the Cowboys had no answer. Now, see, I'm one of them people that I, you know, I'm, I'm a stats-based guy. I, I'm not as good at y'all at breaking down the film or breaking down technique and things of that sort. So I always leave that to like what I call the subject matter experts. But I know in that Green Bay game, while there were a couple runs where um, where Aaron Jones got out in the first half, Dallas yeah. held them to 2.5 yards in the first half. When they were down 27 nothing, that was all Jordan Love. You know what I'm saying? Aaron yeah. Jones, he got the two touchdowns because, you know, what you do from the three-yard line, to me, it doesn't matter. Like nine times out of ten, you're going to score if you have the three-yard line. doesn't matter if you're running. doesn't matter if you're passing. So I don't worry about touchdowns. That's not the way that I judge running back quality, right? But the Cowboys had pretty much shut him down. Demarcus Lawrence was an animal getting behind the line and shutting down the Green Bay off uh, Green Bay running game. There were a couple plays where he did break out and got those seven yards, 10 yards, 12 yard runs. But all in all, it was a passing game that was the biggest problem for Dallas. They weren't able to stop Jordan Love. They had receivers running all over the place. So for me, I don't like to look at that Green Bay game or the San Francisco game in week five when they held McCaffrey to his lowest yard per carry of the season. Uh, up in, I, I have to check the last couple, but up until like week 11, they had held him to his lowest yardage per carry. And again, San Francisco, Brock Purdy was the issue. Uh, Mason got out in the second half. He had those big runs. Arizona, big runs were out of shotgun. So for me, while I see that there's damage and there's a couple games, the Bills game is obviously the outlier because they just ran all over Dallas in that game. But I try not to overreact to that saying that the Cowboys need to focus all of their energy on improving against the run because I just don't see the run as being that consequential in the grand scheme of stopping opposing offenses. It's passing game is king, and that's just my personal philosophy. But I hear what you're saying about them definitely needing to get bigger. To me, the biggest problem is the DTs weren't doing anything. Like Hankins was in there. He wasn't great. Mozzie Smith, they slimmed him down to 295 for whatever reason. I have no freaking idea why they did that to that man. But for me, I still don't see the the need to turn around and say, we got to take a linebacker first round or we got to go sign Patrick Queen or any of the other top free agent linebackers in this draft. Do you see that argument or are you still more believing that, that the Cowboys just need to improve that linebacker core no matter what? So – had De had DeMarvin Overshone panned out and not gotten hurt, yep. I would I would say, and I don't let me say this. I'm always gonna be BPA because I do believe that we're talking linebackers today, but I right. do believe that if the right receiver falls to you, you can't pass on, you know, maybe a Brian Thomas or a okay. Ron Madunze or some of these guys that we'll get to later in this draft cycle for you know a linebacker that you have to have because you think that's gonna stop the run. Cause if you draft, you draft. And Dallas right. has shown to be good at driving. So I'm with you there. Here's my only rebuttal. Every time this team gets in trouble, what do they want to do? Put Micah Parsons, and not maybe not the team, but the fans, there's people who yep. want to move Micah to yep. off-ball back. I, I hate to tell people this. Micah was not good at Penn State as a true <laughs> Mike, read it, react, close yep. the gap backer. He's always been good just playing forward. Can he yeah. do it? Yes, he's a freak athlete. He's a 4-4 four -four guy. He's, I mean, he's an animal. But there are guys, Nick Bolton, who are just better at linebacker than a Micah Parsons. Right. And so I don't want to keep moving Micah. I mean, for me, I love that San Francisco plays their base defense, and they say, stop it. We're going to come. Yeah. Everybody knows San Francisco, gonna, they're going to have their guys. They're going to have Greenlaw. They're going to have Fred Warner on the field. They're going to play defense. They're going to run. They're going to cover. They're going to hit. They're not going to. And so what happens is you start getting cute with these light bodies, these light boxes, and you get taken. I, I agree with you that the run wasn't so much of an issue that it that it lost you games, like the big games, because like you said, you were down and there were so many blown coverages. And we'll talk about safety as well. But I also do think that it's a need, but it's not a need that I say, well, I have to, uh, I'm going to overcompensate and maybe reach. But, you know, you're picking at 24. So if you're right. picking at 24, Katie, you may be wiped out of first round grades by 18. Yep, absolutely. So absolutely. that's kind of where I stand with it.
Okay, we're rocking here with Foots the King on the Catch This Fade podcast. Of course, you can find us on YouTube, uh, Catch This Fade. You can find me on TikTok, Catch This Fade uh, pod. Uh, that's a new TikTok, so we're going to be chopping some things up there. Make sure you guys are doing that. Follow Foots on Twitter, at Foots the King. We're going to have a little scroll to the bottom of the thing, do all the post-recording production and get all that nice and st- that stuff nice and fancy there. Talk to me about at 24. Who is the linebacker that you see at 24 – and you say, there's no way he should be here, get him. Who's that guy this year? Uh, for me, and I, I was early on backers. Um, I actually got a graphic out on YouTube, and I was early on, on this position group. Because around early in the year, I kind of saw with Bell. Bell's a safety. So yeah. I started jumping on those guys early. For me, it's Ezra Cooper, linebacker, Texas A&M. Now, this is without okay. the, the – uh, this is without the – Combine, Senior right. Bowl, things change, right? But I like Ezra Cooper. I just like the way he he flows to the ball. He could play weak. He could play middle. Um, he's just a fast physical linebacker. Like okay. he plays the game how it's supposed to be played. I liken him to a Patrick Queen, Queen at LSU. Now Patrick Queen hasn't been who he was supposed to be with the Ravens, but at LSU, Patrick Queen was really good. Uh, that Devin White type of mold that can just okay. run. He can run, Katie, but he's also really physical, SEC brand of football. So for me, at at 24, it would be Edron Cooper. Um, he's he's my guy. Okay. Let's take it from the perspective of Dallas goes a different direction in round one. They take the wide receiver to play opposite C D Lamb, take over the role that we, you know, were waiting for years for Michael Gallup to fill. He teased us in 2019. Hasn't really been able to do that since we got, you know, some great play out of Brandon Cooks up until the playoff game where he was like a deer in the headlights, fell short on that deep pass from Dak Prescott. That really pissed me off, man. Uh, I don't even know if he really did his job on that first interception uh, on the slant where where he got cut in front of. Um, yeah. But but got rough. I, I need... completely got roughed off. Yeah, like, I mean, like, I know that you were small dude, but I, I, I expected more out of that, like, especially after – all of the great plays and traffic that we had seen him make down the last half of the year. So I'm on board with saying if there's a wide receiver there, go get him. Because again, to me, passing game King, if you're not going offensive line, get me a wide receiver, but let's say that you go, Oh, well, or wide receiver in the first round and you wait till day two to try to get a match because my personal take is LVE isn't coming back. Neck injury was scary. We're worried about overshown. Uh, He had an ACL. You never know what's going to happen. I mean, we just got, we just got over our love fest with Jabril Cox because of his ACL injury, right? He never came back the same. So knock on wood, Overshone is able to come back and be what everybody thought he was, as excited as we were. But let's say the cupboard is still bare and you just have, you know, Jag, replacement guy from free agency that's just stopped the gap guy. You're on day two. Who are some of the guys that you think are going to be available in either the second or third round that could be that Darius Leonard, that Fred Warner, that you could still get some pro bowl, all pro type of play out of in this draft. Well, um, I got two guys for you. And as the cycle goes on, Katie, you could say, man, first tell me about this guy early on junior coach. Go. Just okay. go watch the Washington tape, Michigan linebacker. You talking about a physical, somebody that is going to fly downfield and hit you. Now I don't really, first of all, big 10 football, he's not really turning and running that much. So right. it is a lot of come downhill, you know, you're playing Michigan State, you're playing Ohio State, a lot of run game. But just think about how um, Harbaugh likes his guys to play football, right? Okay. That's who he is. 6'3", linebacker, big body, looks the part, 250, 255, he imposing body. So okay. he's a guy that I, you know, second, third round, because it, like you said, the linebacker position doesn't carry the same weight as tackle or receiver or corner. So he could be staring you in the face. And then Tommy Eichenberg. If you like Sean Lee, you love Tommy Eichenberg, Ohio State. Yep. Eichenberg, Eichenberg, I, I got to remember how to pronounce it correctly, but I, I go Eichenberg. Ohio State linebacker, uh, a little bit of a lighter body, KD, but again, sees it goes. I, I think the Cowboys had a big issue with Damone Clark as far as his trigger. Uh, I don't think okay. that he's a better player. I think the tackle numbers are high. But the problem is where are those tackles happening, Katie? Right. Yep. You know, I, I, I don't want to see my linebackers, you know, getting pile drived into the to the end zone. Like I, right. I just 
that that's just not me. And I think with all the injuries that he's had, I don't know if he's the same amount of physical. You look at a guy like Eichenberg, he's physical, not the biggest body again, not the fastest guy, but he's going to be where he's supposed to be. So those are two names in the second and third round that I will. And there's a few others, but those are the guys that I will really have people to look for and say, hmm, they fit what the Cowboys want to do. Okay. I'm going to put you on a spot here a little bit because I am an HBCU guy, Hampton, Bowie State. That's that's how I roll. Are there any – have you had a chance yet to bring HBCU film study into your 2024 evaluation? So let me, let me ask you that before I put you on a spot. Have you had a chance to review any of the HBCU tape? The deepest that I have gotten – is is like a, a kid from Marshall, uh, Stephen Mix, um, and then there is a kid Isaiah Major. Um, he went to FAMU. FAMU, yeah. So yeah, so he yo, so you're familiar. Um, yeah, that's that's who I was trying to lead you into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so so you've already so, <laughs> I, I mean, yeah. Excuse me, Isaiah Major. So he's the one guy who the kid from Marshall is like the deepest. I, I he's the one guy, but I haven't watched him yet. Okay. But I have read up on him, and apparently. From, so I actually do have a plug who is does nothing but covers HBCU athletes that have a chance to be drafted. And apparently he 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 is in that bell mode. Apparently, yeah. big time athlete, all right, um can play every linebacker position. I just haven't got to his all twenty two into any okay. of them. So, we'll 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 circle he, back he, on him. He'll he'll be a name. He'll be a name because these guys yeah. can play. Yeah, we'll circle back on him. Uh, fam, oh, by the way, was, I graduated from uh, from from Bowie State too. There you go. See, beautiful, beautiful. You know how we do with the Bulldogs. I should have been. Hey, hey, hey! Look, man, I got mine on the wall. I got mine on the wall over here. So yeah, yeah I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I, I I like I like major. I like to keep track of the the, the FAMU guys because it was right. um it was Bell first, and then obviously it was Land last year, and you know we lost him at the end of the training camp. Um, to the Colts, I think Isaiah Land ended up being uh, being plucked by or being cut and then signed by. Uh, so Major is the next in line as they keep churning out these defensive products uh, that can make it in the NFL. So I'm definitely looking forward to see what he can do. Uh, so once you get a chance to study him, let's circle back around and talk about what you see on that film because from what I've heard, he's the best of those three. So we'll see. Oh no, no, he he he's gotten rave reviews. I just don't want to put my name on it unless I yeah, of course. Film. Of course. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. That, that, that's definitely how you how you want to roll with it. All right, man, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. I'm trying to do this, you know, rapid fire, short burst type of thing for 2023, 2024. It's 2024 now. The calendar done moved over. We have we hit the uh, again. We weren't supposed to start this until February, man, but we're here. I know they, the they robbed were eliminated. us, Katie. Dog, I, I, we're going to talk some more, man. We're we, we going to have to get a little bit of therapy session going when it comes to talk about these Dallas Cowboys and, and how we're going to fix them, man. So all we can do is try to identify the coaching staff, the players, and the draft picks that are going to be able to make a difference, and that's what we're here for. So we appreciate y'all tuning in to this, last ep- to this latest episode of Catch This Fade. Again, I'm Katie Drummond. Find me on Twitter, managing editor of Cowboys Wire. This is my man, Foots the King. Find him on Twitter. His YouTube channel is going to be absolutely full with draft content so making sure you're following in there we're going to plug it at the bottom make sure you get the links to everything foots it's been an absolute honor man we're going to have to chop it chop it up again real soon my guy